Hello, welcome back to episode three of the series for teachers who are teaching maths to children aged four or four to five. I'm Rebecca, the maths lady, and I'm here to help you love your maths teaching and particularly to help the teachers who don't just want to follow lesson scripts that have been written for them, but want to understand and have confidence in adapting what they do to really suit the children in front of them. So episode one of this series um, explained the context for the series and a bit of the basics about understanding the learning of four-year-olds. Episode two was about how you check whether children are really ready to learn number when they first come to you and intervene to make sure that they can engage with the lessons if they're not ready yet. And this is episode three, which is all about number in the first half term. Essentially, I'm recommending that you focus on two things. One is on setting up the routines uh, in your classroom that will ensure that children really know how to count up to 20 and back to 20 by the time they leave your class at the end of the year. So we're just beginning that process. And the second is about really thoroughly studying and exploring the numbers up to five. Now you might not actually get as far as the number five during your first half term and that's fine. If you don't, that means you're doing it really thoroughly and you're responding to what you see in front of you. Uh, especially if your children come in in a few at a time and you don't actually have the whole class for that whole half term, you're gonna to struggle to do this. I recommend you spend at least a week on each number and you may well want to spend more than that. So like every episode, this is heavily grounded in the theory of education as well as in best practice. And the references here are again, the Clements and Sarama learning trajectories approach. It's a great deal of detail on, in there on how children learn. And my other key reference is a series of three articles written by Dr. Dave Hewitt. Now, Dr. Dave Hewitt did his PhD with Professor John Mason, who's all over this literature behind me of maths education. And Dave Hewitt took on this question Big question in maths education. When should children rote learn maths? And when do they really need to focus on learning by understanding? So he wrote this series of three articles called Arbitrary and Necessary. And he really put his finger on it. There are some bits of maths that aren't logical. So for example, naming numbers, just because the first number is called one, and the second number is called two, how can you guess what the third number's gonna be? It's not logical, it needs to be rote learned. Similarly, some definitions, conversion facts and so on, these need to be rote learned like earworms, just so they're absolutely there for you because you've done them so many times. And I'm mentioning this because when you're working at this stage with four-year-olds, it's not really any logic of maths yet, you need to put in place the foundation stones and carefully start to build understanding and logic from those. So, establishing the routines for the year. So your children are going to learn to rote count up to at least 20 and back down from 20. So they know those numbers and they're just there for them in their brains. It doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you're focused on a journey that's going to let you do that by the end of the year. But just to give you one example that I'll take on through this series so you can see how it develops. A teacher may count the children at the beginning of the day. And I've seen teachers do it with you know, a fabulous wand. They point at the children one at a time and everybody chants together, initially with the teacher leading quite loudly so the children could just learn to echo her or him. Um, and that's all you do in this first half term. And you can start to have a discussion. You know how many children are in the class and you can say, oh, one's missing because we didn't get to 28, we stopped at 27. And it doesn't matter if the children don't really follow that. They're just getting some exposure to maths and they are starting to learn those numbers. We'll take that on later in the year and gradually the children will begin to know those in numbers independently. And counting down in your first half term, you might want to start with countdowns for pack up, tidy away. And of course, if you're counting down, maybe just from 10 at this stage, you can start to get the children to count with you. 
but sometimes it's nice just to count yourself because it's you're more empowered then just to slow the counting down if the children need a bit more time if they're actually being good however you choose to do it you might count the children out the class for lunch or break or whatever so there are 10 children still in the class one goes out and you count down it doesn't matter but you need to find a way of establishing those daily routines for counting up and counting down at the beginning of the year so that by the end of the year the children are going to be fluent. Now let's talk about the numbers to five. So the Dave Hewitt bit, the rote learning bit here, is about the components of the number that you're going to knit together to create a huge understanding of each number. So children need to be able to count the number. If there's that many objects, can they correctly count them and say how many there are? And they need to be able to do, for the numbers one to four, what we call subitize the number. And that is see it instantly. They should instantly know that one on its own is one. If there's two things in front of them, they should instantly see that as two. Three things, that's one in each hand and one extra, but somehow it becomes instant with enough practice. And similarly four, and four is about as far as it goes with subitizing. But that's a foundational skill of maths that children need. And we need to knit it to their other understandings of number. So they need to be able to represent each number with fingers. I'm not talking about using sign language or Makaton because they use different representations for six, seven, eight, nine that are just done with one hand. And we want to actually have the correct number of fingers showing as we get to those in a, in a later episode. So it's just representing with fingers. They need to be able to say the numbers themselves. If you show them a number of objects, can they say the name of the number of objects that you've just shown them? They need to be able to hear the number and understand it. If you say the number one, can they show you one finger? Are they hearing you properly? It's natural to assume that just because they can say the number, they can hear it too. And that's not always the case. Next one, can they draw the digit for the number? And the resource I'm recommending here is the Communication for All Number Formation Rhymes because they're used in so many schools and they find them really good. There's a rhyme and a tracing picture for each one because you can do it out in the yard, you can do it on people's backs in all sorts of ways as children begin to develop their fine motor skills and most of them won't be confident writers at this stage. And just as hearing the number and saying the number are different skills. So writing a number and reading it are also different skills. So we want flashcards for the digits and check that children, when you show them a flashcard, can they show you the correct number of fingers? Can they say that number? Can they start to connect up the different representations of that number? And you want to explore the meaning of that number in the worlds of the children. If I say the number two, what does that mean to you? Tell me about the number two in your world. And this can be part of your number wall that you create for the number, all the different ideas of that number that you're working on at the current time. So hopefully that explains how it can easily take a week, even with a number as simple as one. As we get on to larger numbers, we also want to add in what is one more than the number and one less than the number. So we're constantly practicing that. And we want to work on the partitioning of the number. So if we have three children in a classroom, how many of them might be boys and how many might be girls? Starting to get children to imagine these things. And one of the great bits of apparatus for this is your two-sided counters, two-sided counters. If I have three of these, a simple question to set the children. I've got three two-sided counters, I'm going to throw them in the air. What colours are, are going to be showing when they land? How many might you have of each colour? 
and you discuss it and see how many answers they can come up with. As you get onto larger numbers, like say four or five, you might give all the children a picture of four things and then ask, give them two colours to colour them and let them sneakily colour them in a way they think no one else will have coloured them. Just develop their understanding of the partitioning of each number with different representations for each number and then connect the different representations you do for each number. So if you are doing three with people that could be boys or girls, or counters that could be red or yellow, just make those connections so they start to see that there's a pattern and universal results. So absolutely loads to do with each number. And of course, you want to be making links between the 10 different ideas of number that I've just listed. And then children really, truly will have a very good understanding of the small numbers. And that's what they need to start to lay the foundations for harder work. Definitely do loads of songs. Definitely link them to the different representations of number. If you're doing five little speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, you want your five fingers up. And so one can really jump into the pool and then the children can look at their hand to help them remember how many and count again, how many they, there are now. That's what a lot of them will need when they're just four years old. You also want to get your kids as active as possible. Can you embed those small numbers into physical activities, things the children have to do, maybe groups they have to get into. So they just get really deep experience of those small numbers. You won't have to do everything that I've suggested here. It's up to you. Use your instincts, work out what your children need. A lot of children will fly with number no matter what you do, but hopefully this has given you a framework for thinking through whether they've got the best foundations in small numbers that they could have and they're set up for the rest of the year. In this episode, I haven't talked at all about shape, space, measure and attributes, the other part of maths. I'm going to work through the whole of number first and then come back to that. But I just wanted to mention it because, of course, triangles as a representation of three, squares as a representation of four, counting the sides. It's a lovely bit of applied maths to bring in here and link into your teaching of small number. So that's everything you need on number for your first half term. Good luck with it. Enjoy your maths teaching. If you like this series, please subscribe to the channel. Please give us a like. Please recommend it to your friends or mention it in groups. Hugely value your support. I'm Rebecca, the Maths Lady. Hope you love your maths teaching. Have a great day.